Hi, I'm going to show you how to break down time series data into its essential components. And a lot of times when you're trying to describe trends and what's going on, such as seasonality or unexpected events, using a time series decomposition method will really help you give a, a better way of describing what has been going on throughout time. Also, this is also one of the base kind of steps for forecasting. So if you can see what I have here, I have several graphs. I have the actuals, the trend, the seasonality graph, and then the noise. And I'll go through each one of these. Um, and one of the great things you can do for this is once you zoom in a bit, you can see there's dips in the actual trend that we can go back and describe. Maybe there was a recession or there was some break in production. And then we can see from the seasonality very easily, like what's the seasonal trend here. So you can see if we count, there's definitely um, some dip within quarters. And then looks like the actual trend is yearly. So there's like a dip every six periods or six months because this is a year and we can see that is a very defined pattern. And then we can see there's noise and these are the unexpected events or things that are fluctuation in the actual, if we modeled this data and predicted it. So we can see that as time goes by that you can see these residuals increase in the last 10 years of the actual data, which may be due to a number of reasons, but this will definitely help to increase conversation and help you kind of understand what's going on with your actual data and, and production or sales throughout time. So let me show you how to break this down in a couple ways. So this has been done just using um, some uh, Python script in the script editor. But I also want to show you how to create just a Python visual with the same information. And then it'll give you an idea of what you need to put into the, the Power Query areas. So I'm just going to open up another page here and I'm going to take you through the data. It's the date and the production value of a machine. And you let me just go to date. And you can see that the date is monthly and it spans from 1985 all the way down to 2018, and we have the production value there. So I'm going to create a Python script. So I'm going to hover over this visual, go over the Python. And now that we're using these two columns as our data set, I'm just gonna paste in some code and then walk you through it. So now I pasted in some code. And what we're doing, we're importing pandas as PD. This is a data manipulation uh, library. We're importing matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. This is going to be able to show us our visuals. And now what we're doing for that seasonal decompose is we're using stats models. And then we're using TSA seasonal. And from that particular package, we're importing seasonal decompose. I have taken the data set here, which we can see that this is a variable that your data set is saved under. I changed it to DF because I don't want to keep writing data set. And then I just ensured that the date was set for date time. And then I made the index the date. So in order for you to do uh, seasonal decompose, you just need to have an index as a time series or a date time index. So we need to set the index of the data and the index would be, you know, what, instead of having one, two, three, four, we would just have the date as the first column. And then I want to set the frequency of the data so we can use this seasonal decompose. And this, this would be month start. So you can see I set the frequency of our actual data using the df variable and then the function as freak and then added ms for that. So all we've done is set the index to the date and set the frequency and now we can use a seasonal decompose function 
and then we can get our plot. And then we use plt.show to see what we've created. I'm going to pull this out a little bit so it renders correctly. And we should get a visual very similar to what you saw in the first part. So I'm going to run that. And now we have our seasonal decompose. You can see that we have our actuals, our trend, our seasonality, and then we have our residuals. So these are very good, easy uh, plots to give you a lot of information on what's going on with your sales or production over time. So if I go back to that main page, I'll show you how I created these within the data, because sometimes it's better to have this within your data. So I'm going to go to transform and I'll show you what I did. This is the original data set. So we see date and production. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And then what I did is I made three, three tables with seasonality, residuals, and trends. Now, I don't know why, but I couldn't get them all to fit in one table, so I just broke them up. It's really easy to copy and paste the code. So let me take you through it. I'm going to electric production, and you can see I have a column called seasonality. And then you can see here, there's a date, there's a production, and then there's a seasonality here. And the seasonality is going to show the fluctuation over or, or the pattern over time. So now that I have this, if I go over to the applied steps, you know, I've brought in the source, promoted the headers, renamed the columns, and now here is the Python script. So I'm going to click into that. And you can see we have done almost the same thing we've done for our visual when we created it in the Python visual. The, so we've brought in pandas, we brought in statsmodels.tsa.seasonal, and we imported the seasonal decompose function. We resaved our data set um, variable as df just for easier writing. We created a date to make sure it was explicit that it was a date. So the way we did that is we just isolated the date column and then we used pd.toDateTime. Then what we did, we saved over the df to set the index. After that, we changed the frequency to month start because we wanted to give those explicit things to the seasonal decompose function. After that, we use our seasonal decompose, but instead of plotting it, I just pulled out the seasonal part. So you can see we passed in our data frame or data set to uh, the seasonal decompose, and we use dot seasonal just to bring out the seasonal. And then I reset the index so we can see the date again. So if I hit OK, you can see that you are given the original data set and then the DF that we stand for. So we open that table up. And it's going to run again. And now we can see that we have production, seasonality, and then I just changed the types. Now you can literally go and copy that particular script, go over to the next one, which is the residuals. And the only thing that I've changed was the, the method or the point after the seasonal decompose. So let me just show you what happens if we don't reset the index. And I hit OK. So that's going to, I've commented that out. And if we go down to DF and then change types, you see we have an error. And then let me get rid of the error. You can see that the index is not visible. So we, re we really need that reset index to give us back the date because a date would operate as this index. So I'm going to go back up into the script. I'm going to uncomment that out. And it's going to give me back the data frame. Now I just change the type back to a date. And I did the same thing for trend. 
So it's a really easy script that you can access. So that's a good way to break down your visuals. Um, a really easy script to use. You can, you can either visualize it with your Python script or we can break down that in our actual data. It's very easy to copy and paste this script to any kind of time series data that you have. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.